vasculitis ireland um my name is marguerite collins and all of those little um letters after my name the ma means that i i am a master of music therapy i did my master's down in ul and the nmt is just an extra training course which stands for neurological music therapist and then the IACAT is the Irish Association of Creative Arts Therapists and it's our governing body um, and it's in there that I get a lot of my work actually. Um, it's in there that, that I get my private clients and and they we have symposiums every year and CPD hours and it's a great little body to have. Um, so I'm going to start off by I suppose explaining a little bit about music therapy and who's it for and how it might help. Um, people with vasculitis in the future um, I understand that vasculitis I've kind of looked up a few of your symptoms and they are kind of similar to um, a bit of the research that I did on chronic pain so I thought I'd tie that in and just give you a little overview of music therapy and chronic pain and fatigue and how it might help you guys so what is music therapy these are three different definitions here um, the first one is from the American Music Therapy Association and it says that music therapy is an established health profession in which music is used within a therapeutic relationship to address physical, emotional, cognitive and social needs for individuals. Um, I like this but I just don't think it really gives a full explanation of who we are. Uh, Wikipedia, I suppose. Kind of. I like that it says that it's evidence based because everything that we do is based on research that has come before or research from either speech therapists or physios um, or even neurolog neurological brain surgeons. Everything we use evidence based in everything that we do. And then the last explanation here is the one that's from the Irish World Academy. Um, and that it kind of includes a lot. So music therapy is an established psychological clinical intervention, which is delivered by a qualified music therapist to help people of all ages whose lives have been affected by injury, illness or disability through supporting their psychological, emotional, cognitive, physical and communicative and social needs. So I think that last one really really does what it says in the tin i kind of like that explanation the best out of the three um but yeah a mixture of all of them i suppose is probably what defines it um so the people who use music therapy um so last february for my um valentine's present to myself i went off and did some very nice uh cpd hours over in greece with a music therapist that's highly renowned her name is joanne lowey and she developed a method called rhythm breath and lullaby and that was in the nicu and the nicu is just such it's such a traumatic place if a mother has to give birth and their baby is premature and uh, giving birth I'm sure is, is, is a traumatic experience <laughs> enough as it is without you know worrying about your baby's um, health and safety and it being born too early and the amount of you know um, small things that can happen to little babies of that size but uh, Joanne developed a method and she developed instruments with Remo the drum maker to make these ocean discs so that it would sound similar to the womb and ghetto boxes that would she be able to tap into their vital signs um with a, a box that sounds like a heartbeat and she would um talk to the mom and and do a song of kin so even if the mom is humming around the house or listening to her favorite soap or whatever she'd be able to pick up on that and um sing to the baby and work with the mother and the mother wouldn't feel helpless i suppose because you know this doctor is and nurses running around your babies in this little incubator and the mom can actually do something and you know give her voice and this really helps bring the baby along there's been loads of research done um uh, hundreds of studies of that are blind randomized control trials and it really does show that this rhythm breath and lullaby method uh, works to bring babies vital signs on and helps them get out of hospital quicker so that was 
just an amazing two weeks in in Greece that I did um in NICU music therapy training um at the moment I'm also working with a little boy that has Down syndrome and he has a speech impediment um he's two years old and he's uh and yeah he has a hearing um he has he had hearing loss from quite an early age um so his speech is quite slow to come along but at the moment we're we're singing through nursery rhymes and he's um kind of coming up on Anna Cruz's like do you know when you kind of sing uh e-i-e-i and then the next thing the the baby's able to say oh and like open up their mouth and use their vowels so stuff like that so it's 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 really useful to help with speech impediments and helping helping toddlers and and young children to learn how to speak um the next one is autistic spectrum disorder um music therapy looks quite different for that as well um it's used in brain injury and stroke rehabilitation there's um a great music therapist who's a clinical nurse as well working in the nrh in dundee becky o'connor is her name and she has helped many a person after very bad brain injuries and strokes and she has um used the words of songs and where the song is in your brain if you have a song like say i'll tell me ma or something and you have the the melody of it in one side of your brain you might be able to sing it but you might not be able to speak so she actually works in rehabilitation to kind of cross those wires and help people to speak again after they've incurred a stroke or a brain injury um i work a lot with saint michael's house and i work in the hse um in a mental health facility so um special needs and mental health issues is where is where i've been working since i graduated um during my training i worked in an addiction clinic out in fatima and my research like i said was on chronic pain um and another one of my very nice uh, placements was in the need community unit um are working with dementia and palliative care so there's there's all the people who can use music therapy and i'm pretty sure if you have any symptoms or anything like that from vasculitis ireland you would be able to contact a music therapist if you feel like it's something um that's a therapy for you it's non-invasive and um it uses music and it definitely uses the kind of humanistic approach because we're coming from a place that's, that's uh we're using instruments and not mm. needles i suppose so um that's that's the one good thing about it um but also it is a big distraction from your pain if you're going through any pain so as i get on to that i might as well tell you a little bit about my research on chronic pain um it's called the role of live music in chronic pain waiting rooms and it was a mixed method study um, and i collaborated with um dr harman dominic harman he's a, an anesthetist that works in croom and university Ho- uh, hospital limerick and then my supervisor academic supervisor was hillary moss who's the course director of the only music therapy master's degree in ul So the aim of the study was to determine the therapeutic effect of live music versus uh, pre-recorded music, which we use as like a very good Spotify playlist on patients in a waiting room of a chronic pain clinic. So this was uh, in a hospital setting and research in music therapy in medical sessions settings is really scarce because it's it's hard for us to get in there but there's a growing body body of evidence to suggest that music therapy can assist at coping with serious illness and pain so a comparison study of this kind has never been done before and it hasn't been done in a hospital waiting room and the pain clinic wasn't studied so like my motivations for doing this i suppose were to add to the literature and um try and i suppose get get a thesis done <laughs> within my kind of uh final final year of the masters so i had to do something that was quick and achievable so what we did was um we had two different pain clinics and the one where the spotify clinic ran was in university hospital limerick and um we handed out surveys um and then I actually played live music in the other pain clinic out in Croom and handed out the same surveys and you'll be able to see some of the results 
here's some reference to other studies that kind of helped um help me with my research um so you can have a look through them yourselves i'll leave them on the page there and um, you should be able to access definitely the hillary moss one and gary ansel you should be able to access them for free So yeah, like I said, the methodology was that two pain clinic waiting rooms were utilized for its study. Um, University Hospital Limerick Pain Clinic was the, the one where we used a Spotify playlist and we used like very special, nice, lovely speakers that were like really bassy Bose speakers. Um, and it was over the duration of six clinics. And then the song lists were curated by Dr. Harmon and myself and some of the patients they would go into their um, appointment and Dr. Harmon would ask them what would you like to play for the people sitting outside and that became quite a nice thing for them to do um, and it definitely you'll see for the results for yourself I've added some of the pie charts um, from my results here so in the Croom Pain Clinic I attended six pain clinics as well playing live music on guitar and flute and voice and the choice music was um, really up to the patients like I had you know I had enough music to kind of cover about two hours without having to look at uh, notes or anything but if somebody requested a song I would do my best to look it up and, and sing it for them um, and then yeah I administered questionnaires and we sorry this says that i'm hoping to have it but no we, we had t over 220 um 220 questionnaires all together over the over the 12 weeks so it was it was really good to be able to analyze that uh, amount of of uh, patient filled out surveys um so i'll get along to the limitations so I was 100% sure that, you know, live music is way better than like any Spotify playlist because if you come in and there's just music playing in the background, you kind of ignore it. Um, whereas with live music, it was, I was sure that it would just work better. So I kind of have my own bias as a musician. So I had to kind of remove myself from that. So I actually got help from a statistician to count up the surveys for me and, and give me back the results and we used excel as well so um, i could kind of stay out of it a little bit <laughs> um and we did convenience sampling so it was only the patients that showed up to the appointments that contributed so we're not really looking at like the entire population that are suffering with chronic pain so that was another limitation to the study um and then yeah, we I looked at using thematic analysis as part of my research uh, theoretical framework and journaling, and that that added to a lot of a lot of my findings as well. Um, so I'll go through the results, and then if anybody wants to read my thesis, um, it's published. Well, it's in the process of being published on the Nordic Journal of Music Therapy, along with Katie Fitzpatrick who was the year ahead of me. So we collaborated on that a bit and it is being published at the moment. We're just kind of waiting to hear back when it's gonna be up online for everyone to read. So here's some of the results. So the question that was asked in both clinics was, did you find the music beneficial while you were waiting for your appointment? And 76% found it beneficial in comparison to 60. So they're both like really, good responses i suppose and it's, it's great that the live music kind of out won there by a lot um but even the second one is most of the time so you're looking at like way up into the 90 percent like only three percent said like it didn't they didn't find it beneficial at all and that was in both both clinics um and was your musical taste provided so in the live music clinic like i said i was the one that was kind of asking for requests and seeing what they wanted and I'd try I'd do my best to to cover the songs that they wanted themselves um but another limitation to this is that you know it was it was in Limerick and I know the population like they're kind of in their 60s like I was able to do a lot of trad for them a lot of Irish songs a lot of John Denver and um this age loves uh, I suppose Joe Dolan and Daniel O'Donnell so so there's a lot of that being blasted out <laughs> um 
did the music reduce your feelings of stress? So this is where things got interesting. So in the live music clinic, um, I don't know if you can see that number there, but 71% said yes, it reduced their stress. And uh, another 11% said most of the time it reduced their stress. And it was a real mixed bag with the Spotify clinic because I just don't think it was noticed uh, just because it was background music. Um, and the next one was if you felt nervous or restless, did the music reduce or help with these feelings? And like that, it's just such a landslide in the live music clinic versus the Spotify clinic there. You can take another look there yourselves at that. And if you had feelings of agitation, did the music reduce these feelings? 69% said yes all the time in the live music versus 37%. So it really is, you know, 50-50 with these ones. Um, did your wait for the appointment seem shorter because of the music? And 78% said yes for the live music versus 43% in the Spotify clinic. Um, and... Do you think live music should be supplied in all hospital waiting rooms? And these ones were really, really high up. So 82% in said live music should be supplied and 77% said that it should be as well. So, do you know, you're looking at 1-2% of people that said it shouldn't be supplied. <laughs> you're always going to find the grumpy one out of everyone. So, um, if you were feeling pain, did the music help ease or reduce your pain? So if you can see here, most of the time and all of the time in the live music clinic, that adds up to 65%, um, which is just such a, such a big number considering a lot of the people asked was this question going to be, um, going to affect their level of care. Um, they were looking at these surveys going do you think I'll be coming to the chronic pain clinic just to just to hear music now <laughs> or will I actually be getting my treatment but no um, I assure them that they're they'd still be getting their their uh, their injections <laughs> um, so yeah it's just it's just really surprising what live music can do and um, I think that question really added it up so here's a couple of the references that kind of helped me out for this presentation um, I'd like to jump out on a couple of them I shouldn't even mention uh, Ahasi, the songwriting with clients who have dementia I did a lot of songwriting with um, with dementia patients and also pa uh, patients in my in my mental health facility they feel like writing writing things down um, and being able to turn it into a song is just so expressive and helps with their mental health so much. Um, Joanne Lowy's one, um, down a bit further about the NICU, that's all online and it's free. And if anybody is thinking of joining a choir, it's like a very cheap way to improve your mental health. And that was proven by Hilary Moss here, Sing Yourself Better, the health and well-being of singing in a choir. Um, she did a very similar study to mine. It was mixed methods and surveys, except she got back over a thousand surveys of people across the country singing in choirs. So even if you don't have a note in your head and you just want to join up a choir, there's definitely one in the community. Um near you try your like even if it's not a local church there's like a lot of big gospel move movements that are coming alive now so whatever you do try and sing because it definitely helps with your health and i know in this day and age the pandemic people police are telling us not to sing but doing it in your own home um is something that we can all do and do safely uh, so if there is any other questions please feel free to contact me through my website and I might as well finish off with a little piece of music. So, if you want to close your eyes, Focus on a nice big inhale. 
inhale for three and out for five that's what people usually say and then I'll just play play something nice and somber to lead us out there's no point in having a music therapy presentation without at least having a little bit of music very much for having me vasculitis ireland um i know this was supposed to be quite a, a quick presentation it probably took a little bit longer than i expected but uh, i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you enjoy the rest of the conference and you stay safe out there thanks a million